Uh, the next three chapters are a total of seven pages. I'm going to try to read through uh, from chapter 21 through 23. Chapter 21, Causes of Copper Deficiency, and this is the beginning of a, a section on this uh, subject. There are many different causes of copper deficiency. Some are, are more well recognized by the establishment, but even then they are not well recognized by doctors. Some are well recognized in the science, but not well recognized by the establishment. Some are not well recognized by the science, but are only hinted at in the science. Some I cannot find at all in the science, but I can put two and two together, and I can see causes of action on how copper could be blocked by some other nutrients. This is potentially a very large field of study. Uh, the biggest list of things that block copper that I found from others is 10. I know there are at least 45 things that block copper, uh, going to show the greater depth of my studies on copper than I have been able to find anywhere else. One man, one man asked me to order my list in terms of which blocks copper the most, but I don't know if the science is that good yet to even know the answer to that question. Uh, I try to guess at it uh, later in the book because it's a very important question. But to answer it, we first have to know which things to look at, and to my knowledge, the size of my list is the first of its kind. Further complicating the answer, if you look at one thing, such as iron, that blocks copper, it will be a sliding scale, depending on how much iron is involved. I tend to believe that if a thing, such as vitamin C, blocks copper, and if you take many milligrams of the substance, then it could block copper more. But it does not always work like that. Vitamin C has an indirect copper blocking effect that starts around uh, 1,500 milligrams, as that much can lower ceruloplasmin, which is a copper binding and transport protein. Uh, for fluoride, it takes 2 milligrams of copper to bind to 1 milligram of fluoride, as we'll see later in the book. Further complicating the matter, you would have to compare across the list. And furthermore, drug-induced copper deficiency is not the type of thing that's generally investigated or even listed among a typical drug's side effects because the medical establishment has a view that copper deficiency is rare, so they're not even looking at it. Uh, I guess another way to get to the question, or one way to get to the question, is to compare a drug's listed side effects and compare that to the general symptoms of copper deficiency. If many symptoms match, it could pre presumably be because that drug blocks copper. And there are so many symptoms of copper deficiency, as we saw, that it may be likely that most drugs, most drugs tend to deplete copper as a general rule. And as another general rule, most drugs do not contain copper. And as another general rule, the body treats most drugs as toxins. And as a further general rule, copper tends to use up, tends to get used up as it detoxifies things. So toxins, therefore, uh, tend to deplete copper. All right, chapter 22, Typical Medical Literature Reports. The medical establishment rarely diagnoses mild, chronic copper deficiency. They often recognize only acute or frank or severe copper deficiency, and by then it's often too late because the nerve damage is, has become so severe it might be beyond repair. So once again, you can't trust doctors to recognize and prescribe copper. And copper is not a prescription medicine, nor should it be. So you have to look out for yourself. So causes of severe copper deficiency are often reported to be, one, infants fed cow's milk only, which is too low in copper, or people fed uh, parenteral nutrition, and this is the medical term for infusing a specialized form of food, form of food directly into veins intravenously, or three, people who have had gastric bypass surgery because they then absorb fewer nutrients, or four, people taking too much zinc supplements, such as over 50 milligrams, or using a denture cream high in zinc. Uh, getting back to that gastric bypass surgery, I've heard people who have had that done, they are also prescribed lots of calcium, and calcium can block copper, as we'll see later. Uh, I didn't think of that when I was writing the book. Uh, so these are the medically recognized, the most commonly medically recognized causes of extreme copper deficiency. Uh, there are many more possible causes of chronic moderate copper deficiency, such as the average diet. And what I find interesting is that the medical establishment seems to know all this, yet copper is not added to fortify cow's milk, nor is it added to fortify denture cream containing zinc. And furthermore, many multi-mineral supplements are now being marketed as no copper, presumably because of the undue fear of copper toxicity growing in the general public. 
Medical doctors tend to fail to recognize copper deficiency as a cause of many diseases that are known to be from copper deficiency. And why is this? Well, it's not their job, nor is it in much of their training to know much about vitamins or minerals, nor to prescribe them. While many diseases are now said to be medically and undisputably related to copper deficiency, doctors and the media are still not advising people to take copper for heart disease or diabetes or really just about anything. Chapter 23, athletes need more copper. And I think I'll start here, I'll do chapter 23 in the next video.